Good morning and welcome, and welcome to those who are watching us online and will watch us later in the day. The church wardens and the clergy had a meeting the other night and it, on Zoom, and uh, it was decided that we would keep the church open throughout the present time, um, because people have actually been very good at following all the rules, the one-way system, the sanitising, and the social distancing. This will be reviewed every week and fresh asset, risk assessments will be done. But for now, we are open and we offer a daily mass, except on Wednesday when it's uh, recorded and will be simply online. In our prayers today, we remember Nick Dixon and his family following the death of Margaret Dixon um, from COVID. So we pray for her and for Nick and for all the family. Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech thee mercifully to receive the prayers of thy people which call upon thee, and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfil the same, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is taken to, from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that we may prove what, that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Here endeth the epistle. The Lord be with you. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. 
And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But if they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt thus with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it you sought me? Wished ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favour with God and man. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Do you sit down, please? Parents and grandparents know the question that the youngsters ask so often. Why? It can get wearing, but it's a good question because it shows a lively and inquiring mind. And Jesus was just the same. And today we hear how his questioning got him lost. He didn't wander off. He stayed put as his parents went with their party to go home after their yearly trip to Jerusalem. Because for Jesus, this was too good a chance to be missed. Whether or not he knew at this point that he was the Messiah, we don't know. But here was a chance that he had to explore his faith, to go a bit deeper, learn something more in discussion with all those clever temple theologians. It was a natural thing for him to do. Because Mary and Joseph made sure that Jesus was raised properly, raised in the religious traditions of the people of Israel. They observed the Passover feast. They made their annual pilgrimage to Jerusalem. As a proper Jewish family, we assume that they also observed the many religious rituals and traditions which were customary. Perhaps one of the reasons that Mary was chosen to be the mother of God and Joseph his adoptive father is because God knew that they would bring up their child within the community of faith. 
Jesus was obviously a bright enough lad, and he had an interest in religious subjects. His gifts and his talents led him away from Joseph's vocation as a carpenter towards that of rabbi and teacher. Based on his talents and his passions, along with the love of God, which he had heard, Jesus determined that he had to be about his heavenly father's business. He needed to spend less time in the carpenter's shop, more time in the temple precincts. The truth that he was the son of God, the Messiah, the Christ, the one who was chosen to save all of mankind, would mould and shape his life. With the knowledge of who he was, Jesus decided that he would be intentional about the direction of his life. But at the same time, of course, Jesus was still obedient to his parents. After spending some time with the renowned teachers and rabbis in Jerusalem, he returned with Mary and Joseph to Nazareth, no doubt after a good telling off. His life with them was lived in the shadow of who he was and what he was called to do, a realisation that probably came to him gradually, that built up in him, that grew in him. We're in similar positions to Jesus. We too have heard of God's love and the story of Jesus' life, death and resurrection. In our baptism and our relationship with God, we have become children of God and God's light, God's witnesses. We are invited to see the centre of our lives as being going about our Father's business. This is vastly different from uh, seeing religion simply as something that we do on a Sunday. God nudges us to allow the understanding that we are the people of God and servants of God to mould and shape our lives to shape what we are to shape what we do. Such knowledge should affect how we live out our vocation as Christians, the type of parent or child we are, our spending priorities and our outlook on life. No matter where we are on our walk with God, God continually invites us to take another step of faith, to grow in our love and commitment, to expand our service. Comfort and convenience are never God's goals for us. Faithfully, faithful obedience is. Jesus doesn't necessarily want us to stick around the church more or to do more churchy things. They're good things to do, of course, but they do not exhaust the breadth of living an abundant life as a Christian. He does want us to understand what God has done for us, who we are and what we are about. That knowledge is to mould all our lives seven days a week and to enable us to be open to whatever paths of ministry God might will for us. All this to God's glory and honour. May it be so. And now let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. As this water is mingled with this wine, so Christ shed our humanity. 
may we so share the life of his divinity. Wash me truly from my sins, O Lord, and cleanse me from all iniquity, that I may go unto the altar of God, even unto the God of my joy and gladness. Give sentence to me, O God, defend my cause against the ungodly and wicked man, for thou art the God of my strength. Why hast thou put me from thee? Why do I so heavily while the enemy oppresseth me? O put thy trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, which is the help of my countenance and my God. In our prayers, we remember Margaret Dixon. We give thanks for her life and for her love and for all that she contributed to life and the way she made the lives of those around her that much better. We pray for Nick and for all the family in their moment of grief. We pray that God will be with them all to comfort and uphold them in the faith. May they know that the everlasting love of God surrounds them. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church, militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, especially thy servant Elizabeth, our queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed and grant unto her whole council and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O heavenly fathers, all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. You that are truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent 
and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, through the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who in the substance of our mortal flesh manifested forth his glory, that he might bring all men out of darkness into his own marvellous light. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us. O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance 
of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. May the souls of the faithful of the mercy of God rest in peace. Rise in glory. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you.